So you know that feeling when you have books that you loved when you were younger and then you go back and reread them as an adult or even just an older adult and it feels kind of cringe <laughs> or you just wonder what you saw in it when you were younger and I think that's natural. Children's books aren't written for adults but also as a person you grow and mature and your tastes change and I don't think you have to like all the books that you used to like when you were younger but I have some here that I am a little afraid to read again. One, because I am older. Also, I've done a lot of listening to podcasts and researching and learning about stories and story structure, a lot of writing YouTube videos. Since starting a booktube channel and having to film reviews and say what I think was good or bad in a story, I think I look at them more critically now. These are books that I really loved. There'll be a fourth one that I don't have a copy of. I'll see if I can find a picture to put on the screen at the appropriate time. And I'm kind of afraid that if I were to go back and reread these, they wouldn't hold up in reality like they do in my mind. I feel pretty good about Raymond E. Feist because I've heard a lot of other people talking about him and his books and enjoying them. So I'm not as afraid of a reread of this and I might reread it either this fall or next fall. It feels seasonal to me <laughs> because the first time I read it was during marching band season in high school. The Rift War Saga was the first thing I read by Feist. It's my favorite. I accidentally read Magician Master before Magician Apprentice. <laughs> so when I finally went back to read Magician Apprentice, it was like reading a prequel. These are very classic fantasy, classic, small town boy goes off and follows his destiny. I like that it takes place on two separate worlds. It adds just a little bit of that, I don't know, sci-fi flavor whenever there's multiple separate planets. I like Pug, I like Thomas, I like how they both follow their own path and they grow in power and then the coming back together at the end. It's been a long time since I've read these. The last time I read them, I was in the company of other people and at the end I teared up a little and somebody asked me if I was okay and I'm sitting there reading my book. <laughs> uh, this is one that I really, really, really still want to like. So I'll go in with my expectations high probably. If you've read Feist, tell me, do you think he'll hold up? Another one is Black Trillium by Marion Zimmer Bradley, Julian May, and Andre Norton. This is another one of those nostalgic, read it in high school, read it on marching band trips. <laughs> it's an old fantasy that I really, really loved at the time. I don't remember that much about it. There are three sisters. They each have some kind of magical ability and they have to save their kingdom from an enemy. And each of the three goes on their own separate journey. I love fantasy stories with journeys. I made a short video about Lord of the Rings being the one with all the walking. <laughs> I don't mind the stories with all the walking. Those journeying parts of the story is usually where character growth happens and relationships happen. These three sisters each go on a separate journey trying to, I don't know, learn more about themselves, about the magic, what they each individually have to do to save their kingdom. The Black Trillium Blossom itself is magical, but I don't remember how. And sometimes the older stuff can have problematic themes that wouldn't be acceptable nowadays. And you go back and read it and you wonder how it got published. I don't know if I can remember anything like that in this book. However, anything by Edgar Rice Burroughs. When I first discovered Edgar Rice Burroughs, who is the author of Tarzan, John Carter of Mars, he has a Venus series, he has a series in the center of the earth. I loved his books when I was younger. They all follow a similar theme. At some point when you've read a few of them, you've kind of read all of them as far as them being a little formulaic. But when I was younger, I did not realize just how racist and sexist and ableist <laughs> And I don't know if it was a common thing of the times for books to be that way or if it's very much a Burroughs thing. 
I haven't read a Burroughs book in quite some time. A long time. And I wonder if I were to go in and read one of these now, how problematic I would find it. <laughs> and I'm not sure if the stories themselves are even that good. I don't know. It's so short. I could just read one and then tear it apart and say, this is how bad the old sci-fi fantasy stuff used to be. That would feel sad though, because I did used to love them so much. But there's always a strong, able-bodied, handsome man. There is always a, I don't know if I'll say weak, but not necessarily physically capable, but beautiful woman. The woman always gets captured, the man always has to rescue her. I think Tarzan especially was one of the more racist ones, if I remember correctly. Whew. And then the last one I want to talk about is the one I don't have a physical copy of. The last one is Battle Mage by Peter Flannery. When I discovered this book, I thought it was so cool. It was at least 10 years ago, probably, that I read it. The world is falling to the burning shadow of the possessed and only the power of a battle mage can save it. But the ancient bond with dragon kind is failing. Basically, the mages, the battle mages, have to summon a dragon to be their buddy, but black dragons are the bad ones. They're the ones who've like gone crazy and will kill the battle mage who summons it, and so if you are a battle mage and you go to summon your dragon and a black one comes to answer your call, you have to kill it. And the main character goes off to battle mage school, and there's these really nasty demons that they're fighting against. And that bond between dragons and humans is failing, and our main character has to rise to the occasion. <laughs> he has to train, and he has to try to beat the bad guys. I feel like I remember liking the little bit of romance that was there. I liked the journey of the main character. There was something that I feel like I would have a problem with reading it now, and that is the mentally disabled character who has like the magical ability to see that the main character is going to end up being a powerful battle mage. What's his name? Falco. Oh, that's a cool name. Will he unlock the power trapped inside of him, or will he suck him to madness and murder like his father? It still sounds interesting to me now. I like dragon books. I would like to reread it at some point. I'm just a little worried that the amount of awesomeness that it felt like it was the first time won't be there when I read it again and I'll go, oh, that wasn't actually very good. Why did I like this? Uh, I have seen some people, I've seen actually several people in the fantasy book group on Facebook I'm part of. Um, posting their pictures of Battle Mage and saying, this is next on my TBR, can't wait to read it. But I don't see posts that often of people after they've read it to see what they thought of it. So these are all books I enjoyed at the time. If you have read any of them, let me know what you thought or let me know what book you expected to like on a reread and were disappointed about. <laughs> and I'll commiserate with you. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you back here for more videos. Bye. The oldest one smells the best. <laughs>